So the brief for the garden was a sunshine garden, so it had to embody the summer months and all those bright and breezy colours, but it also had to have community involvement and some take-home tips to really encourage people to garden. And, I mean, sunshine, brightness, that certainly makes us think of Diane, doesn't it? Sure, and she was such a, a stalwart of Tatton. She was there every year, so I've tried to embody that in the planting choices and the overall look of the garden. Fantastic. I'm really excited to see these plants. So I've chosen a lot of pollen-rich plants for wildlife. We've got loads of summer hot colours because it's in July, we've got the perfect pick of summer flowers. So loads of colour, warm colours to introduce bees, insects, and also the crowd to the garden. It's going to shine almost like a bright summer's day. And you're using quite a lot of sort of local people as well, aren't you, in, in getting the garden done? So we've got community involvement from schools who are growing some sunflowers that we'll be using in a display around the potting area and the arbour. We've got a local carpenter that's showing some of the best carpentry skills in making this arbour specifically for the garden. It's going to have a green roof to attract more pollinators and show how we can slow down waterfall. There's loads of different aspects of this garden that people can take away. And the green roof is something that you can show us here. You've got one here. Yes, I've got one here. They're amazing for wildlife. In that tiny space over there, you can probably encourage as much wildlife as a standard small garden can. So talking about bees, insects. And we're going to have one of these in our sunshine garden. We are. We're going to have a fabulous seed and roof in the sunshine garden. Gorgeous. 